I probably should have listened to that inner voice telling me to stay out, but I didn't. I walked into the high-end women's boutique, just intending to browse. The store had only recently opened, and I noticed Molly was working today. A couple of weeks earlier, she had been incredibly helpful when I came in. At the time, when she asked what I was looking for, I answered truthfully. I needed an outfit for a Halloween party. I braced myself for a judgmental look or some snooty comment, expecting she'd dismiss me. Instead, she greeted me with a bright smile and enthusiastically started asking questions. Would you prefer a dress or something more casual? She asked, and more questions followed. Before I knew it, she had already set up a fitting room for me. I noticed the store was completely empty, and I figured I couldn't pass up the chance. So, I accepted her offer and tried on several outfits. Though I struggled to choose the perfect one, I felt a sense of obligation to buy something. After all, she had gone out of her way to ensure her privacy and had been incredibly helpful. In fact, she treated me just as she would have any other female customer. That was my first experience with Molly. She had asked me to show her pictures from the party, but I decided to do one better. I showed up in my outfit right at closing time on Halloween. I figured, who would care on Halloween? Besides, from a distance, no one could tell I was a guy. My makeup was professionally done, and I wore skinny jeans, pumps, and a nice low-cut sweater. Molly was thrilled to see me and complimented my look. A couple of months passed, and the other day, I had the chance to visit Molly's store again. As luck would have it, Molly was getting ready to open the store. When I walked in, I noticed she was putting up a colorful advertisement on the door. She greeted me warmly and welcomed me back. Then, as I looked into her eyes, I saw the light bulb go off in her head. She smiled and said, perfect timing. You'd be great for this. I glanced at the ad and realized, to my surprise, she was promoting a salespeople in drag day. Confused, I told her I didn't quite understand. Molly explained that the female staff had decided to have a dress as guy's day just for fun. I joked that she was too pretty to really pull off looking like a guy, and she laughed, saying the girls just thought it would be a fun and different experience. Curious, I asked, how exactly is this event perfect for me? With a grin, she suggested I join them as a guest salesperson for the day. I agreed before fully grasping what Molly was asking me to do. Since it was a dress in drag day, she wanted me to be a saleswoman. Deep down, I found the idea thrilling, the thought of spending a whole day in the store, dressed and acting like a woman. However, I played it cool and didn't commit right away. After a bit of convincing, I finally said yes. Molly seemed even more excited than I was and quickly promised to arrange everything. By everything, she meant booking me a full makeover at the cellar next door and picking out the outfit I'd wear to work. It was probably for the best that the event was only two days away, as more time might have made me second-guess the whole thing. As it stood, I showed up for my cellar appointment at 9.40am, feeling incredibly relieved that no one else was there at the time. As I entered, Joan greeted me with a warm smile, ready to begin my transformation. She asked me to head to the back room to remove my clothes and slip into the robe she had hanging on the door. Taking a deep breath, I reminded myself that this was an experience I had secretly longed for, so I went in, stripped down, and emerged in the robe, ready to start. Joan was pleased to see that I had already removed all my body hair, which meant waxing wasn't necessary. She seated me in a chair and began working on my nails. After a soothing pedicure, I felt increasingly comfortable and compliant. Next, she focused on my hands, giving me a full set of medium-length nails that made my hands look unmistakably feminine. I didn't stop to think about how I was going to get the nails off later, fully immersed in the moment. Next, Joan waxed my eyebrows. I grew a little nervous when I felt the wax being applied under the bottom of my brows, realizing she was crafting a feminine arch that would linger long after today. Sensing my apprehension, Joan calmly reassured me that everything would turn out fine. Unable to see the results, since I was turned away from the mirrors, I chose to trust her. The real shock came when she started placing hair extensions near my scalp. I had expected her to use a wig, 
but Joan insisted that extensions and a great hairstyle would make all the difference. I wondered what she meant by that, and then it hit me. She was putting in the extra effort to ensure I looked as convincingly possible as possible. So I shouldn't have been surprised when Joan asked me to lie down and began gluing two incredibly realistic-looking breasts to my chest. After allowing some drying time and skillfully applying makeup to hide any visible lines, I glanced down in amazement at two perfectly perky, realistic breasts. There was no turning back now. Joan then told me it was time to get dressed before she finished my hair and makeup. Molly had chosen a fantastic outfit for me, a simple black A-line skirt, a pretty, low-cut top, and a feminine jacket. The four-inch platform pumps had me wondering how I'd manage, but at the same time, I was excited to try them on. Molly had guessed I was around a size four for the skirt, but thoughtfully left a couple of different sizes, just in case. Molly had also provided a Victoria's Secret push-up bra, matching panties, and a body shaper to enhance my curves and smooth out any imperfections. As I dressed, a rush of adrenaline surged through me. I was truly becoming someone else, and the feeling was exhilarating. Andre's expression when she saw me fully dressed confirmed that I had pulled it off. She was clearly impressed. With a sense of urgency, she began working on my makeup and hair, noting that it was almost time for me to start work. It was only then, amid all the excitement, that I fully remembered this wasn't just about getting dressed up in private. I had agreed to be a seller's girl at Molly's store for the entire day. When Joan finally spun me around in the chair to face the mirror, I was in complete shock. I was staring at a woman. From the perfectly styled hair to the expertly done makeup, everything looked flawless. Up close, my masculine voice might give me away, but from a distance, there was no way anyone would suspect I was anything but a confident, stylish woman. I thanked Joan profusely and gathered the nerve to step out of the salon, heading towards Molly's store. It was 10.50, just 10 minutes before the store would open at 11. Molly had told me to enter through the front door, as it would already be unlocked, so I did. As I walked inside, a few steps in, I spotted Molly coming out of a storage area. She, who stands close to six feet tall, was dressed in a men's suit, her hair styled in a short, masculine cut. From a distance, she could easily pass as a guy, but her natural beauty still peeked through the disguise. When Molly noticed me, she stopped in her tracks, eyes wide. She quickly rushed over, her face lighting up with excitement. You look amazing, she exclaimed, unable to stop complimenting how convincing and fantastic I appeared. Her enthusiasm was contagious, and for the first time, I felt a real surge of confidence in my new role for the day. As I stood there with Molly, another employee emerged from the back, a petite woman wearing men's pants, a shirt, and a sweater. There was no doubt she was a woman, but her masculine attire completed the store's dress-in-drag theme. Molly introduced me to her as Emmy, and she simply smiled and said I looked great. She did, however, take a moment to compliment my legs, mentioning how jealous she was. I laughed and told her it must be the heels. The next few minutes were a whirlwind as Molly began going over all the tasks we needed to complete to open the store. I quickly fell into my role, following her instructions and getting the store ready for business. My heart raced as the clock neared opening time. Then, as the first two female customers walked in, I instinctively held my breath, staying near the back of the store to avoid immediate attention. The realization hit me, I was really going to do this, interact with customers as a saleswoman for the day. Molly greeted the two women, who immediately complimented her on the suit. She smiled and casually informed them she was going by the name Lou for the day. They laughed and responded with a playful, of course. Then Molly called me over, asking me to bring out some items to hang up, meaning I'd have to walk right past the customers. My heart raced with nerves, but I knew I had to dive in at some point. Summoning my courage, I made my way toward them, trying to appear as natural as possible. What happened next completely shocked me. One of the customers smiled at me and asked, why aren't you dressed as a guy too? I froze for a split second, 
unsure of what to say. Molly overheard and burst into a chuckle. I knew that would happen, she said with amusement. The customers looked a bit confused at first, so Molly explained that I was, in fact, in drag. Their eyes widened in surprise as they glanced me over from head to toe. Both of them quickly expressed how impressed they were, commenting on how pretty I looked. I couldn't help but blush. As the day went on, similar encounters happened a few more times. Each time, the customers were amazed at how well I pulled off the look. Finally, Molly turned to me with a grin and offered a little wager. She bet that no one, from a distance, would be able to tell I was anything but a woman. It seemed like the day was just beginning to get even more interesting. Molly, with a mischievous grin, proposed a bet. If 10 out of the next 15 customers don't realize you're a guy, then you'll agree to work with me as a woman tomorrow too. I thought the odds were impossible, so I agreed without hesitation. But to my complete surprise, it happened. Each new customer seemed convinced by my appearance, and I began to wonder if Molly had set me up somehow. Still, a bet was a bet. I now knew that tomorrow, I'd be back in a dress and heels. As the day progressed, I found myself growing more comfortable, even catching myself acting quite feminine without thinking about it. It felt natural, like I was fully embracing this new role. By the time we closed the store, I was no longer anxious. I was genuinely enjoying the experience. As we tidied up the large back dressing room, there was an undeniable sense of accomplishment in the air. Molly, still in her suit, and I, in my feminine attire, were winding down from an eventful day. It was hard to believe how much had changed in such a short time. I jokingly asked her how it felt to be strapped in. She replied that she knew I wanted to feel it all day, and then took my hand and put it between her thighs. To my surprise, I felt a rather large friend. I took a deep breath and without thinking, Molly pulled me to her and kissed me passionately. Even in heels, she was a little taller than me, and now, pulling me against her, she was assuming the male role. She pressed her little friend into me, and I wondered what was on her mind. Her hands found my breasts and manipulated them skillfully. I felt my chest tense up and my breathing quicken. She knew she had me in her hands. My feminine nature must have taken over as my mind was telling me that I wanted her inside me. My body was on fire, and then my mind went blank, and I blacked out. When I came to my senses, Molly was deftly putting on her pants. I had probably been out for about five minutes. I looked at Molly. She was wildly pleased. Apparently it had all happened while I was out. After a few minutes of cleaning, Molly paused, looked over at me, and said with a smile, I'm really excited to have you working for me. There was an unmistakable enthusiasm in her voice, and it was clear she saw potential in this new dynamic. I stood up and caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror. The reflection staring back at me was strikingly feminine, my long, shapely legs accentuated by the heels, my outfit hugging the curves Joan and Molly had carefully crafted. It was surreal, but I couldn't deny how natural it was starting to feel. In that moment, I decided that working one more day for Molly as a woman would be an experiment worth trying. It was no longer just about the bet. I was curious about where this experience might lead, how it might challenge my understanding of myself, and how much further I could push these boundaries.